accept the Bible as the word of God, um, it's because of what it says about hell. If the Bible's not true, then there's a good chance hell isn't true. And they don't want to even think of that, of it possibly being true. Because if, it, if the Bible's true and there, and there is a hell, there's a good chance they might, they're probably going to go there. And they don't like that thought. Uh, but anyway, tonight I'm going to give you so many verses about hell that you, can't, you cannot deny that the Bible clearly teaches it, that it's there, it's real. And you know another thing it'll help you do? Uh, it'll, it'll help motivate you because I'm thinking about, um, I have relatives today that are, that are on their way to heaven and some in heaven because faithful men of God preached to me this doctrine of hell. They weren't afraid to say it. And it motivated me as a Christian to tell people, I didn't want, when I first got saved, I didn't want my wife to go to hell. First thing I thought of is, I don't want her to go to hell. I don't want my mom, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, people I work with. I, I, man, my friends, I don't want them to go to hell. My in-laws, I don't want them to go to hell. I want them to go to heaven. And so this, this will help you to really focus and see how important it is. And you know, as a result of this message tonight, my prayer is not only that we will be more faithful at telling people about salvation, but people will be saved because you may decide to witness to somebody because you're thinking about it. And it's something that we definitely need to think about. So anyway, let's take take our Bible and go to Psalm 150. We're going to turn take a, a very negative idea about hell and turn it into something positive tonight. So uh, it'll be a blessing. Psalm 150. Uh, <clears throat> this morning, we're just going to praise the Lord. Amen. Let's take your Bible and go to Psalm 150. Let's all stand. Follow along with me as I read this psalm. Psalm 150, praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and harp, praise him with the timbre and dance, praise him with stringed instruments and organs, praise him upon the loud cymbals, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for the Bible. Lord, help us tonight, this morning rather, to focus in on this and to decide to practice this in our life. It's so important that a Christian does this, and so please help us, Lord, to become Christians who will praise you on a regular basis. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. From 145 to 150 are entirely devoted to praising the Lord. <coughs> now, the devil has taken that term and made it into some strange, uh, something strange, so that fundamental Christians tend to shy away from doing so or saying it. But this morning I want to show you that it is very biblical when done the Bible way. And that we should definitely praise the Lord. Every morning I have a time when I do nothing but praise the Lord. It's supposed to be part of my life. And I, and I try to do that. And I do that every morning for a little bit of time. Periodically when my heart is filled with overflowing, I'll just praise the Lord during the day. It is a part of my life and should be a part of my life. <clears throat> and it should be a part of your life, too. So what is, what is it? What does it mean to praise the Lord? Well, let me just tell you exactly what it means when, when the Bible talks about that. To praise the Lord means to give loud approval to what He is and what He's done. Okay, To give loud approval to what He is and what He's done. It also means worshiping God out loud or silently. It means giving glory and honor to Him. It means speaking well of God. It is not just saying the words, praise the Lord. It is actually speaking well of God. For instance, if I told you, uh, you know, God's awesome. I'm praising him. God is so holy. I'm praising him. See, and that's what the Bible's talking about. So <clears throat> why, why should we do this? Well, we should do it, first of all, because it is commanded that we do it. Go to Psalm 146. Verse 1, Psalm 146, verse 1. It is commanded by God that we praise Him, and so we need to do that. If you're not doing that in your life on a daily basis, you need to make up your mind this morning, I'm going to start doing that. Psalm 146, verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. Verse 10, The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Psalm 147, go there. Psalm 147, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. 
It is pleasant, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely, or fitting, that means. I'll go also down to uh, verse number 12. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem, praise thy God, O Zion. Verse 20, he hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Psalm 148, Psalm 148, verse 1, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights. Verse 13, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalteth the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. Psalm 149, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Verse number 9. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. And then we read our verses this morning, this morning where it says, verse 1, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Verse 6, let everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So it is commanded by God that we do this. Now, not for his sake, although he enjoys it, but for our sake and for those around us. I need to praise the Lord because when I'm bragging on God, I'm reminding myself of how amazing God is. And as you go through life, as you go through your daily life and experience all the burdens and all the struggles of life, you can lose sight of the fact of how great God is. So having a daily time when you praise Him will encourage you and help you and give you strength as you remind yourself of the amazing God that you have in your life. Also, when you praise the Lord loudly, it gives, it encourages other people. It encourages those around you. It encourages your children. To, 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 and see, lets them see uh, what an amazing God they have. Also, the lost will see the truth of salvation in First Peter chapter two and verse number nine. First Peter two, verse number nine. The Bible says here <clears throat> in verse number nine, it says, "But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness." into his marvelous light. And so when you, uh, as you tell the unsaved of, of, your, of salvation, you tell them about the great Savior that you have. And I'm telling you, when you witness the people and you tell them about salvation, it, it just comes out. Uh, not, not just the facts of you're a sinner, you deserve hell and all those things, but also you, you all of a sudden just begin to brag on God. What an awesome, amazing God this is, that He would do this for us. And He is so wonderful and so merciful, and so forgiving. And you're praising Him. And when they hear that, and they see that, see what this God really is, not just a bunch of words on a paper. He's a real God. God is worthy of this. In Revelation chapter 5, verse 12, and there's no question about that, that he is worthy of this praise. Revelation chapter 5, verse 2. You know, sometimes we flatter people. The flattery is false praise. And, and so uh, sometimes you flatter people and they don't deserve it. You just give them false praise. But you can never give God any kind of praise that's false. Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. Say with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and honor and strength. And wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. So he's worthy to receive riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. He deserves all of this. You see, God is glorified by it. In Psalm 50, verse 23. Psalm number 50, verse 23. Psalm number 50 and verse number 23. And the Bible says here, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. That's what the Bible says. You glorify God. <clears throat> He's made to feel special. You see, wouldn't it be terrible? And again, I don't believe that God's on this ego trip. I don't think that he has to, he needs, he doesn't need me to do anything, really. But he, I'm his son. And I should tell him how great he is. He deserves that. You know, when, when, uh, when, um, I was reading, uh, my, my, the, the Mother's Day cards and the birthday cards my wife got from, my daughters. There's no doubt about it that those cards, the notes that they wrote, made her feel special. And I think she deserves that. I think she's been a very special example to them and a special mother to them. <clears throat> and, and I think she deserves that praise. Well, God deserves it a whole lot more. 
And we ought to make, and she enjoyed being made, feel, made, being made to feel special by her daughters. And I think our Heavenly Father enjoys to be made to be, uh, feel special by his, by his children. And we should do that. You know, God, God is not this stiff, a robot sitting on a throne. He's a person who's got real feelings, just like we do. We are made in his image. And he enjoys that. He deserves that. He really does. Psalm 96. Psalm 96, verse 6. Psalm 96, verse 6. The Bible says, Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. We need to praise him. <clears throat> for his majesty, his the word majesty is talking about his excellence or his superiority. And we need to praise him for that. We need to praise him for his holiness. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. <clears throat> the Bible talks here in Exodus 15, 11. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? He is a holy God. Isaiah 6, 3 says, holy Holy, holy. We need to praise him. He's worthy of praise for his holiness. His holiness is talking about his lack of sin and his presence of righteousness. And we need to praise him for that. We need to praise him for his wisdom in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 20. I'm giving you some ideas. You say, what do I, what do I say when I praise him? Well, praise him for his majesty, his superiority above everybody. Praise him for his holiness. Praise him for his wisdom. In Daniel chapter 2 and verse number 20. And the Bible the Bible says here, Daniel 2.20. <clears throat> it says, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. His wisdom, it's worthy of praise. You know, God knows how to handle every situation that comes up. He knows how to handle everything. He knows how to act in every situation of our life. Man, that is wisdom. That is wisdom, and he needs to be praised for that. We need to praise him for his power. In Psalm 21, verse 13. Psalm 21, verse 13. Psalm 21, verse 13. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power. We need to praise him. He's all powerful. Man, what an amazing God. Can you imagine standing there at the Red Sea when it was parted? And the people walked over on dry land. And then when the last foot came out of the, the, uh, the, the sea, which was dry land at the time, God enclosed it in all the Egyptian soldiers. Man, if I saw that, I, when I read that, I'm just in awe of it. But if I was there to see it, wow. And you know what? We need to praise God for his power. And if you have been saved for a while and you've been trying to live for God, you have seen his power in your life. And he needs to be praised for that. Psalm 107, verse 8. Psalm 107, verse 8. Psalm 107, verse 8. And the Bible says here, <clears throat> Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. We need to praise the Lord for how good he is <clears throat> and his wonderful works that he does. He treats men right and he takes care and does good to the people that live on this earth. And we need to praise him. You know, he gets criticized a lot. He gets criticized by the unsaved people. They mock him, make fun of him, say he doesn't even exist, even though it's so obvious that he does. <clears throat> Why don't his people praise him? He deserves that. This The earth ought to be full of his praises. You see? And, and we as Christians just tend to keep quiet about that. No, we need to tell how wonderful, how awesome, how amazing this God is. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 21. 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse number 21. The Bible says, And when they had, he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they should, that should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. You need to praise God for his mercy. Man, that's something you ought to be in awe about, the fact that he does not give you what you deserve. Isn't that funny? Sometimes Christians complain that God has not given them what they deserve. Oh, you better be careful to say that. Because he says, oh, you really want what you deserve? Man. No, he doesn't give us what we deserve. He gives us mercy. 
mercy every day. And he says it over and over and he reminds us over and over and over again of his mercy. We ought to praise him for that. Psalm 138 verse 2. Psalm 138 verse 2. Psalm 138 and verse 2. And the Bible says here that uh, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. We ought to praise him for his loving kindness and his truth. He is to be trusted to treat you with kindness and to always tell you the truth with his word. Man, we, 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 we can t- count on that. It's loving kindness. See, man, that, that's amazing to me. Here I am. I come before him, and if I failed him in any way, I can approach my father, not worried about, he's going to yell at me. Oh, he's going to be upset with me. No, he's going to be loving and kind to me. That's the kind of God I have. Wow. That's incredible. And then, truth. He's always going to deal with me according to truth. I know exactly Okay, I, if, I, if I'm tempted to do something wrong, I know exactly what God's going to say about it. Because he tells me in the Bible what he's going to say. He's going to tell me the truth. He's going to deal with me according to truth. I know what the truth is about everything. I know what to believe about everything because God has given me truth. We need to praise him for that. He has shared truth with us. He has not hid it from us. He has shared it with us so we can have truth. Why is this world so mixed up? Because they're not living by truth. But yet God has given us truth. We have it available to us. We have the teacher of truth living inside of us if we're saved. So we have we don't have to be confused. We don't have to be messed up. Because we're walking down a blind alley. We've got the light of the word of God to guide us. And it's all truth. We can praise him. We ought to praise him for his faithfulness. In Psalm 36 and verse 5. Psalm 36 verse 5. Man, it's just, it's overwhelming how great he is. Psalm 36, verse 5. And the Bible says here, Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Psalm 89, verse 1, talking again about his faithfulness. Psalm 89, wow, this is amazing to me. Psalm 89, verse 1, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever with my mouth, while I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Deuteronomy 7, 9 talks about that. 1 Corinthians 1, 9 talks about that. Many verses in the Bible talk about his faithfulness. He's always there when needed and will always do what he says he's going to do. He's faithful. He's faithful. And we ought to praise him for that. We ought to, we ought to brag on God for his faithfulness, not just to him, but to those around us. We ought to be praising him. That's why he said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I want people to sing my praises to other people so they'll realize what is available to them. Who is available to them? They've got to know about this amazing God. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1. Isaiah said, O Lord, Thou art my God. I will exalt Thee. I will praise Thy name. For Thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Psalm 19, 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. He, we ought to praise him for his wonderful works. Man, I, I, I hope you're not a Christian that just kind of forgets about what's around you. I mean, the stars, the sun to heat us, the moon to light the night, food, clothing, health, answered prayer. I mean, all these different things. God's amazing creation, everything about it, it's incredible. It was wonderful works to, to the children of men. Psalm 16 and verse 7. Psalm 16, verse 7. The Bible says here, Psalm 16, verse 7. I will bless thee, bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. <clears throat> My reigns also instruct me in the night seasons. He says, I want, we ought to bless him for his counsels. Everything he does, as Isaiah 25 says, says, are faithful and true. Everything. Think about this. I mean, God offers us his counsels. God offers us all of his blessings upon our life, all the wonderful works, all the miracles he offers to us. We ought to praise him for that. Man. Psalm 42, verse 5. Psalm 42, verse 5. How could you not do that? How could you not be overwhelmed when you think about God? 
to, to do that. That's what I'm talking about this morning, to remind you as a Christian, you need to spend time every day doing this, thanking the Lord, praising Him for who He is. Psalm 42, 5, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise Him for the help of His countenance. He helps us. The help of His countenance, just thinking about uh, His countenance. I mean, He gives us everything we need to get through whatever we need to go through. We have Him there available to us. You see, He's everything. We ought to praise Him for this. Now, if that's not enough, let me give you some more. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. In Luke chapter 1, verse 68, the Bible says here, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. I mean, he he has brought us salvation, folks. That means eternal life to us. If you're saved this morning, that's what you have. You have eternal life. You know, you'll be able to sit during the message tonight, and one of the things you'll be able to say, if you're saved, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. It's a scary place. It's a terrible place. It's a forever place. But I'm not going there. And I'm not going there because God so loved me. He provided salvation for me. Wow. Yeah, see, I, that's, a, that's an awesome, amazing thing. And it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a bad thing at all for you tonight to, to if, as you're listening to that and you realize that, just to say, Boy, I want to praise you, Lord. Thank you. Wow, that's amazing. You're an awesome God for taking care of stuff. He didn't come to me and say, no, okay, you see this awful place? You better really work hard trying to make sure you don't go there. He didn't say that. He said, I'll take care of it. I'll pay it all. Wow. Don't you see what I mean? What, What an amazing God you have. He deserves your praise. Another thing about God is he keeps his promises. 1 Kings 8.56 says there's that failed one word of all his good promise. He keeps his promises. He's, you can count on it. 1 John 1, nine. we ought to praise him for his forgiveness. Not only does he save us and pay for our sins, but also on a daily basis to make sure our relationship with God is the way it ought to be. He says, I'll forgive you on a daily basis if you'll just confess your sins to me. Deliverance and trials. Go to Psalm chapter 40, verse 1. Psalm chapter 40, verse 1. Psalm 40, verse 1. The Bible says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of a miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. You know what David is saying here? He changed my whole life around. Has put a new song in my mouth. He brought me out of a horrible pit and established my goings. He put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Many are going to see this changed life that God's given me. David said, I, I've been delivered. And because I've been delivered, I'm praising him. You see, praise is part of the new life. That God has given you. It should be part of your life. For you to go day by day by day. And God never hears anything. Doesn't hear a thank you. Doesn't hear a praise. That's sad. That's sad. Especially when when all, we're thinking about all that he's done for us. He, I, I've mentioned to you uh, over, over at least 15, 16 different things here. And, and even if I only mentioned one. Even if I just said, hey, God lets you walk on this earth. It's enough to praise him for it. All this other stuff too. Go to Psalm 28, verse 7. Psalm 28, verse 7. I was excited one day when I found out that my daughter, Amy, had picked this as her life verse. Psalm 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in Him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise Him. He praises God. For God's protection. He prays God in Psalm 28 verse 6. For answered prayer. You see on and on and on. There's so many things. 
that, that we should praise God for. I want you to go to Psalm 27, verse 6. Psalm 27, verse 6. Psalm 27, verse 6, David said this. He said, Now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. See, our praise expresses our joy, which is something we all should have. So that kind of tells me the reason why you don't praise the Lord, you got something in your heart that's not right. Some kind of sin there that you're holding on to that's affecting your ability to recognize how awesome God is to you, what an amazing God he is, and how much he deserves your praise. It's so important. Now, let me ask you, let me just ask this question and answer it for you. Who should do this? Well, go to Psalm 103, verse 20. Who should praise the Lord? Now, I want you to look at this to see if you are included in this. Psalm 103, verse 20. What does the Bible say? It says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So there he said, he's talking about how bless or praise is the same thing, basically the same thing. But anyway, he's talking about how his angels ought to do, okay? His angels. All right, I can see that. His angels. And we see in the Bible, the book of Revelation, that they are doing that. They are praising him. Psalm 148, verse 2. Praise ye him, all his angels. Okay, the angels are supposed to do it. But his people are supposed to do it too. Psalm 30, verse 4. Psalm 30, verse 4. The Bible says here, Sing unto the Lord, O ye his, o ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. We're supposed to, all the saints are supposed to do that. We're supposed to praise him. Again, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. That includes me. That's why I started doing it. I added it to my prayer time as I was a growing Christian and learning these things. I added thanksgiving and I added praise to this. Why? Because I have breath and so I need to praise him. You see? Go to Matthew chapter 21, verse 16. Matthew chapter 21, verse 16. <clears throat> Matthew 21, verse 16. And said unto him, Matthew 21, 16, Hearest thou what they say? And Jesus saith unto them, Yea, have ye never read? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. That's children. Psalm 148. Verses 11 and 12. Okay, he's talking about who should praise the Lord. Psalm 148, verses 11 and 12. Kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. You see that? Children are supposed to praise the Lord. The angels are supposed to do it. The people are supposed to do it. The children, the little people are supposed to do it. They should be taught as children to praise Him. Why? So it will become natural as teens and adults. But you know what? If you don't praise Him, they won't praise Him. It's time God's people taught their children to praise them. And it's time God's people taught did it themselves. We need a, a church full of people that are not griping and complaining and criticizing, but are praising the Lord. And you know, when you become a praising person to Him, you start looking for things you can praise in each other. You see, Psalm 150, verse 6, again says, let everything that have breath, and that includes you. So if you're not having praising time, it's time for you, you to hit an old-fashioned altar and say, Lord, I am so sorry that I have not spent any time bragging on you like I should. <clears throat> when should we do this? Well, go Psalm 104, verse 33. Psalm 104, verse 33. Uh, there's a lot of preaching I've heard in my life that has caused me to make adjustments in my life. And this is one of the adjustments I've had to make in my life. Make in my life. But can I tell you, this is one of the easiest ones I ever had to make. It's, it's so true. I mean, just start bragging on God. I can do that. I can do that pretty easy. There's so much to brag about him for. Psalm 104 
and verse number 33, the Bible says, I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. That means while I'm alive on the earth. Can I just let you know, in case you didn't know, you're alive on the earth. And so you ought to start praising God today. And if you're alive tomorrow on the earth, you ought to praise him tomorrow. And every day between now and the time you go to heaven, you ought to praise him every single day. All right? Uh, Let's go to Psalm 71, verse 14. Psalm 71, verse 14. By the way, it's an enjoyable time when you do this. It's enjoyable, very enjoyable. And very positive. Psalm 71, 14. It helps you overcome a negative attitude when you have one. Psalm 71, 14. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. You see that? Your praise should grow more and more. Second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 21. Boy, God talks about this a lot. He you know, obviously it must be very important to us that we do this. Second Chronicles 30, 21. The Bible says, <clears throat> And the children of Israel that were present at Jerusalem kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with great gladness. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments unto the Lord. Day by day. See, we should do it every day. Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. Psalm 145, verse 2. <clears throat> talks about how we ought to do it day and night. Day and night. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. The Bible says, Revelation 4, 8. talks about praising him day and night. It, it gets us ready for heaven. We are to do it forever. <clears throat> forever. When we, and we will when we get to heaven. We'll be doing it. But let's do it while we're, go, we're on, on our way there. Let's start today and keep doing it until we get into heaven and we'll keep doing it for all eternity. That's the way it ought to be. Now, question, where should I do this? Psalm 149, verse 1. Where should I do this? It says right here, stand up on the city bus tomorrow and do it. No, it doesn't say that. (laughs) Psalm 149, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. What do you think that's talking about? Church! It's talking about when the saints congregate. At church, for example. So that means you pick up your songbook, you open it up, and you sing to Him. You say, I can't sing. I know how you feel. God doesn't care. Can, can, Can I just tell you, as far as God's concerned, everybody in this church has a really good voice. The only bad voice that, that is in this church that God sees is the no voice, the one that won't sing. That's a bad voice because there's something wrong with that person when they won't sing. They either don't care or they they're got some kind of sin in their life. But we're supposed to sing at church. We're supposed to praise the Lord at church. Our, our song service should be loud because people are praising him, what an awesome God. Maybe you have a rough life, but you have an awesome God. Maybe your family is not doing so well, but your God is amazing. We're not singing to your family. We're not singing to your problems. We're singing to God. He's awesome. We ought to do it at home. Jesus was talking about, when he's teaching about prayer, he said, what part of it is to say, hallowed be thy name. That means to praise him. And that's talking about prayer, your prayer time. Do it in private prayer. So you do it at church. You do it in private prayer. And you know what? You can do it anywhere. You can do it anywhere. Out soul winning. Brag on God. While you're at work, brag on God. You know what? A good way to start a conversation with someone at work. When, and I'm not saying you, you should never uh, stop working to do this. If you get paid for 40 hours, you ought to work 40 hours. But a good way to get a conversation started at work if you have an opportunity is, hey, can I just share with you something, uh, an answer to prayer I got? E- even with unsaved people? Yeah, even with unsaved people. Can I just share with you something God's done for me? I want to tell you something amazing happened to me. And you're going to tell them about this amazing God. And what he did, that's praising God. We're supposed to do that. And then, you know, we're going to do it in heaven. Revelation chapter 5. If you read the book of Revelation, uh, there's a there's a lot of fun times up there. Revelation chapter 5. 
Verse 11, I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. So here we see the, the Lord being praised up in heaven. So we do it at church, we do it at home, we do it anywhere, we do it in heaven. Now how should I do it? How should I do it? Well, you do it in music. You do it in music. You do it in song. <laughs> Psalm 47, 7, singing he praises with understanding. Songs about his blood. We're praising the Lord this morning about his blood. He shed blood. Wow. What an amazing thing that Jesus Christ would go through what he went through on the cross, shedding his blood. And the shedding of blood in him always involves pain. You see? And boy, what an amazing pain he went through. Is that blood came pouring out of his body. We were praising him about that this morning. We should praise him in music in our songs. We should praise him with understanding. <clears throat> understanding who God is and what he's done and what he expects. Folks, don't let the song books, don't let the songs that we sing here just become uh, uh, like uh, redundant. No, know what you're singing. I'm thankful we have a song leader that makes us aware of what we're singing. Not just saying a bunch of words. We're singing praises with these words to him. You see, we ought to praise the Lord with our soul, very soul, our very being. The Bible talks about praising him with a whole heart. In Psalm 119, verse 7, that means a clean heart. Not a rebellious heart, not a, not a heart with sin, but a clean heart. A heart that's read the Bible every day. A person that's, that's spent time in prayer. A person that's faithful to God's house. Doing what God wants them to do. That's the kind of heart God wants you to praise Him with. He says praise Him with your lips. <clears throat> Psalm 63 verse 6. Praise Him with joy. Psalm 63 5. Praise Him with thanksgiving. <clears throat> a thankful life will go a long way in praising the Lord. See, thank Him for all He's done for you and praise Him for it. I can't help but look at my life, and you should be able to say the same thing and say, wow, what an awesome, amazing God. You know, again, I say this, and some of you here, maybe you don't believe, but if I was to show you everything that's happened to me since 1979, I could even go before that, but since 1979 when I got saved, if I showed you everything that's happened, to me and my family, <clears throat> you would think I was crazy if I said, I don't believe in God either. You would have said, you don't believe in God? Look at that. How can you not believe in him? All that's happened to you? Man, God's all over that. And if you th think about your life, God's all over your life too. But maybe you haven't seen it. Maybe you don't realize it because you're not spending time praising him like you should. And thanking him like you should. Praise comes natural from a Christian living right. He made us to praise him. I'm not talking about wildfire kind of praise coming from a person who looks like, acts like, lives like the world, then comes to a building on Sunday and lifts his hands and cries, praise God or praise the Lord. I'm talking about a person who has been saved from hell and God has made him a new creature. And from a heart overflowing with love for his Savior comes forth praise, real, genuine praise. I want to ask you this morning, when's the last time you really praised him? Can you do it from a surrendered heart? If not, get that heart right today. If you're not saved, it is impossible to give God one of the biggest things he wants from us, our praise of him, our loud approval of his greatness. Trust Jesus today, be saved today, so you can truly praise the Lord. You're one of his creation. You're supposed to be doing it. You don't have much to praise God for because you don't know him. But if you know him, if you come to know him as Savior, you'll begin to know him, everything else about him too. And the praise list will just keep growing. Keep growing. You see, that's something you ought to do every day. So I'm asking everybody in this room this morning, if you're a Christian, make a commitment to spend time each day praising him. And you can do it with your prayer time. Confess your sins. Praise the Lord thanksgiving, thank him for things, and then pray. You can do that every day. Not a day should go by without him hearing. You, you praise him with your heart, with your lips.
And you know what? On a regular basis, other people ought to be hearing about this amazing God you know. All right, let's pray. Every hand bowed, right close. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Please help us now to look at our lives and help us walk out of here praising people, praising you. What an awesome, amazing God. And you'll have your children in this room will be people who will praise you. That way, we will, we, we will again realize what an awesome, amazing God we have, and also other people will see and hear from us how great you really are. And they'll be attracted to you through that. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. <clears throat> Do you know for sure you're going to heaven this morning? Do you know that for sure? Are you 100% sure? The Bible says we can be. First John 5, 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. You can know you have eternal life. God wants you to know it. And there's only one way you can know it. If you're depending on your own good life to get to heaven, you'll never know if you're good enough. If you're depending on your baptism or, or joining a church, well, the Bible says those things have nothing to do with it, so you'd be depending on things that are wrong to depend on to get to heaven. There's only one person to depend on, that's Jesus Christ. Because he left heaven, came to earth, God the Son, he lived a perfect life for you. He went to the cross, and on that cross, he took, took your sins, past, present, and future, and was punished for your sins. He paid the penalty you should pay yourself. You should die and go to hell for your sins, but Jesus paid that penalty for you, and he bought you the gift of eternal life. And three days later, to show you he was really God, he was really the only Messiah, the only Savior, he rose from the dead. He walked out of that tomb alive, and now he's up in heaven. And the Bible says if you'll call on him and ask him to save you and give you eternal life, he'll do it. If you don't do that, if you never ask him to save you from hell and give you eternal life before you die, then you'll have to pay for your own sins after you die. And God doesn't want you to do that. He loves you. He wants you in heaven. <clears throat> How many would say this morning, Pastor, I remember somebody telling me that. I remember sharing somebody sharing the gospel with me, God's plan of salvation from the Bible. I saw it. I believed it. I asked Jesus Christ to save me, and he gave me eternal life. And I know for sure I'm going to heaven. If that's you, would you raise your hand? I know for sure I'm going to heaven. You may lower your hands. How many would say, Pastor, when I die, I want to go to heaven, but I'm honestly not sure I would. I'd like to be 100% sure. <clears throat> if I could see from the Bible how I could be, I'd like to look at that. If that's you, would you raise your hand? I'm not sure I'm going to heaven, but I'd like to see from the Bible how I could be sure. In just a moment, we're going to have a song of invitation. When the song begins, we're going to invite you. If you're not sure heaven's going to be your home, we're going to invite you to leave your seat, come up front here, and just tell Brother Kevin, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I'd like to see from the Bible how I could be sure. If you tell him that, he'll direct you to somebody. He'll take the Bible and show you God's plan of salvation so you can go to heaven. If you'll just see it, believe it, and ask Jesus to be your Savior. If you are saved, the next thing he wants you to do is get baptized. So if you've not been baptized since you've been saved, you can do that today. You just All you got to do when the song begins, you just come up to Brother Kevin and say, Brother Kevin, I'd like to get baptized. We'll be glad to help you do that today. If you want to join the church, to come up and tell Brother Kevin, I'd like to join the church. But again, Christian, uh, we talked in Sunday school <clears throat> about being gentle. If you're not a gentle person, you're a, kind of a mean, gruff person, why don't you come and, and talk to God about that at this altar? If you heard this morning about praising the Lord and you're not, you have not been praising the Lord daily like you should, why don't you come up and make a commitment to God? I'm going to spend time every day praising you, telling you how great you are, to remind myself, to give you what you deserve, Father, but also tell other people about what a great God you are so they can be drawn to you. Tell God you're going to do that. Ask him to help you. All right, let's all stand. The song will begin. You obey the Holy Spirit and do what he says.